Welcome back to a new video, bro. I hope you guys are doing fantastic, bro. If you're brand new, be sure you subscribe. My name is R. Today we're reacting to Logan Paul's refund. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, let's see what the coffee zilla has got to say about Logan, man. You know what I'm saying? Before, before I, I haven't watched this video, man. You know what I'm saying? But I have a great respect for Logan, and I have a great respect for KSI for the things I've been able to accomplish in the short period of time especially with the prime you know what i'm saying and i'm happy i i saw logan paul a couple of months ago getting in with dillian dennis you know what i'm saying so let's see where you went wrong here logan paul is refunding people he scammed if they promise to stop suing him for the vastly larger amount he may owe them and honestly i'm conflicted because on the one hand victims getting money is always great and i'm proud that our investigation led to some real world consequences but i can't pretend that things are fixed or fine for people who entrusted me with their story when that's just not true. So here's the real, more complicated story in three parts. The refund offer, the zoo tokens, the lawsuit, starting with the most important part. And if you get one thing from this story, this should be it. These are the estimated damages in CryptoZoo. 18 Whoa, so this guy is, is claiming that Logan Paul scammed almost $19 million in NFT sales. $1.5 million, which comes from a combination of ZooCoin and NFT sales. And then this much smaller percentage of that pie. Oh, so Logan is only giving back like only 10% of what he supposedly stole. That, that's interesting, but he's only giving back like 2.3 million. That's still a lot of money, but they want him to give back at least more, more than half, you know what I'm saying? is what Logan is actually offering to refund. On the condition though, that all of the people who spent the last year suing him for the larger damages, drop their case. So that's- Wait, what? By accepting these terms, you acknowledge, you agree that you are weaving an actual or anticipated claims against Logan. That's a refund of only 12% to drop 100% of the case that as far as I can tell, Logan may be losing. Put in that light then, this refund, starts to look less like a good faith attempt to make things right and more like a cynical bargaining chip to avoid getting in even more trouble. And a careful look at these refunds conditions show that Logan is even less serious of a person you may give him credit for. Logan is offering only a one month claim window for this refund given a year after waiting Oh, yeah, now that is a little bit sketchy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because why would you just do that, bro? Like, the buyback will be available for eligible participants for a limited window beginning January the 4th. So it's already started. It will be expiring on February the 8th, 2024. Once the buyback period expires, no claims will be considered. That's a little bit harsh, don't you think, guys? Let me know in the comment section. Eating and hidden in this wall of text is the most shocking part, which is that he's not releasing the CryptoZoo game at all, which I know we all kind of knew that, but is actually insane because that's the thing. To be clear, he's sold millions of dollars of NFTs for and tens of millions of dollars of in-game CryptoZoo tokens for. I knew he wasn't going to make it, right? We all get that. But I watched for three years as Logan's fans, and that's what these investors were. They were fans of Logan Paul. They spent three years begging this guy to make this game. And the entire time, the entire time, he told them he was working on it. And I thought, even at my most pessimistic, that Logan would at least crap out some abomination that he described as a game that limped past our lowest collective expectations. But I was wrong. I mean, I wasn't yeah, bro, it's pretty deadly, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can't take $20 million from people and not produce the game that you promised. You know what I'm saying? You should at least release the game, bro. Even but he's not releasing anything at all out of that $20 million. So what he just did, he's basically a scam artist, bro. That's what he's saying, and that's what I'm seeing from his story. But I gotta listen a bit more. Wrong. The first time he said I was wrong, when he said he was going to still finish the game, I was wrong that he was going to do it at all. But even after 12 months of work, you've still managed to overlook one crucial piece of information. See, even though I've said it's coming so many times, you've assumed that CryptoZoo isn't being made. Who are you to decide when the development timeline ends? Trust me, CryptoZoo is coming. I will make damn sure of it. Oops, so much for making damn sure of it. 
because there's no game. This is what makes this such a massive con. This guy sold millions in NFTs, tens of millions of zoo tokens, and he's not even gonna release the thing he promised this whole time. This is why it's such a slap in the face. These investors spent three years waiting for a game. Not only that, two years waiting for an update, which he never gave, and then a year suing him. And after all of that, all he offers is a 12% refund, no game, 30 days to accept. So look, Logan's already taking heat for making good on a promise that he made a year late, but that's not even true. He's not making good on this promise because it's not the same promise. Last year, what he promised was no strings attached buyback and you get a game. This year, it's please drop your lawsuit and you don't get a game, which is incredible to me that there are influencers out there like KSI parading this around like a win for to say no. Yeah, bro, KSI is sucking off. They're both sucking each other off a little bit. Logan Paul, like he's some sort of hero for offering a year late half-baked settlement offer. KSI says, what will the haters say now? I don't know. How about where's the game? Where's the art? Where's the millions invested? Where's the motivation for this tweet? Oh, wait. KSI is a co-founder with Logan and Prime. So, of course, that makes KSI Logan's new biggest fan. But seeing as how Logan treats his biggest fans, don't say I didn't warn you. So that's part one, the refund. Now part two is the zoo tokens. Remember, there were two parts to CryptoZoo, the zoo tokens and egg NFTs. Now, the tokens were the vast amount of damages that were actually caused, while the NFT sales were much lower. Logan conveniently wants to refund this much smaller part of his game, the NFTs, while pretending that these zoo tokens were never a real part, they were just gambling. Now, this was sort of less bad when the game was still going to come out because, you know, it made some sense. Maybe you'd still have these tokens, but now it makes no sense at all. From Logan's statement, this buyback is a way for me to make whole those who intended to play CryptoZoo. The buyback is not intended to compensate those who gambled on the crypto market and lost. So he's describing people who bought his in-game currency as gamblers. But that's confusing because the whole point of these zoo tokens was to buy the egg NFTs and play the game. That's literally how it worked, according to him. So instead, he calls people gamblers, despite also saying, quote, Zoo Token was created to support the Crypto Zoo game and its players. It was, quote, not intended to be an investment vehicle. So how can he say that, then turn around and say, people who bought this were gambling? If it's not an investment, how can you refund people who intended to play Crypto Zoo if you don't refund people who bought the token that was, quote, created to support the CryptoZoo game. You can't. It makes no sense. And this is why I say this isn't even close to a full refund. And now that he's abandoning the game, what we actually have is millions of dollars of in-game currency Logan sold that he won't pay back. Which brings us to the final... Yeah, bro, that's a little bit dirty, bro. Millions is not going to pay back. And he didn't even release the game, bro. So why don't you just pay back all these people that money? He doesn't want to lose his money. You know what I'm saying? But I think I already have a little money from Prime. This nigga is greedy. He wants more money, bro. That's why they does. The part of this story. The third part, the lawsuit. After telling all his fans that they were gamblers who lost, Logan has one final surprise. He says, quote, I have filed a lawsuit in federal court in Texas to hold these bad actors accountable. People who ruin CryptoZoo. But what Logan doesn't tell you is that Texas lawsuit is something he's being sued in already. He's a defendant in the lawsuit that he links in his tweet. He's just cross-suing his co-defendants. Like, he's already being sued, and he's just re-suing the same guys who are all already being sued. And who are these secret bad... He's re-suing the guys that sued him. What? ...bad actors Logan's going to hold accountable anyways. Turns out it's his employees he hired, Eddie Ibanez and Crypto King, which all of us already knew because I investigated the story a year ago. But imagine my surprise. When Logan Paul tries to rewrite my investigation to pretend he did all the work himself and uncovered the real scam of CryptoZoo while simultaneously trying to erase his part in it. He says, and I find this very funny because I spent a year on that story, quote, this lawsuit is the result of an exhaustive investigation that included the review of the entirety of conversations. You'd be forgiven to think he was quoting my investigation. He's not. He copied it and tried to rewrite it to make himself look good. In this lawsuit, he says things like, hey guys, turns out Eddie Ibanez's entire backstory was a fabrication, including the MIT NFL story. Can you believe it? It's like, yeah, we know. And then he goes, yeah, well, you won't believe what I discovered. Crypto King secretly sold tokens. 
Yeah, we know. Logan just shamelessly rips off my work claim for claim without citing me. I mean, he says things like Mr. Greenbaum would later admit that he made millions of dollars through his surreptitious sales of zoo tokens. But where did Logan find that admission? Was it perhaps when he investigated my video? Time and time again, this lawsuit copies my work, but is embarrassed to cite it. So they even have to say things like, based on public reports. What public report? Mr. Ibanez made approximately $1.7 million from selling zoo tokens. I could... But I remember, guys, I remember, I'm an OG fan of this guy. I remember this guy when he had like less than 100,000 subscribers. Now to see him with like 3 million. And I'm, I know where most of his subscribers came from. It came from like him exposing Logan Paul. But what this guy does is he exposes a lot of these scammers, which is good, you know what I'm saying? And now he's attacking Logan because Logan's not even giving him the credit, man. You know what I'm saying? He's taking his work and uh, copying his work, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like plagiarism. I swear I've heard that before. And for my calculations, he made about $1.7 million. Now look, I don't usually mind people using my work. But it's kind of a little strange that Logan is simultaneously trying to discredit my work, saying this lawsuit is not based on snippets of conversation taken out of context, a snipe at my investigation, while then stealth quoting it to pretend that they did any real legwork. And look, if you found that shameless, that he tries to steal my work and pass it off as his own investigation, this next part gets even worse. Because Logan's story this whole time has been that it's all other people's fault. You know, it's just bad actors. Everyone but him was bad. He was always well-intentioned. But his timeline contradicts him. According to his investigation, which is actually my investigation, in August and October of 2021, he learns that Jake Greenbaum and Eddie Ibanez are bad news, and he kicks them out of his team. So what does he do after that? He's gotten rid of the bad actors. Can't blame them anymore, right? Does he make CryptoZoo? No. For a full year before I made my video, Logan Paul had full control over his project. He admits it in his own lawsuit. And he did nothing. He said nothing. So how does he avoid accountability now? Well, enter the whipping boy, Jeff. That's right. Manager Jeff is making one last appearance. Logan blames Jeff for screwing up September 2021 through 2022. But you know what he doesn't mention? What he'll never mention? The real reason the project didn't get back on track is not because of Eddie, not because of Crypto King, but because Logan's own team stopped paying developers who are working on rebuilding the game. So those people stopped working on CryptoZoo. And that's when I found it. The game was dead. It had been dead for months. And that's when I made a big stink out of it. Meaning it was 100% within Logan's power to save this game. I'm not saying nobody else did bad things, but Logan ultimately had over a year to launch it, to make things right. And he didn't for financial reasons not because someone this guy is in the wwe you know what i'm saying he's like he's in wwe he's also doing boxing training you know what i'm saying and he's also making podcasts and he's also yeah this guy is doing a lot bro you know what i'm saying so it's understandable that he didn't release the game last year because he was doing a lot but at the same time i also feel bad for those niggas that spent a lot of money on this so you know what i'm saying so because the niggas were expecting to get a game out of this when backstabbed him he just didn't want to spend the money it would take to make things right and you know what that is still true now it is still 100 within logan paul's power as a near billionaire with prime to make things right fully right with his fans who he scammed and if he did gave a full refund we would all celebrate me foremost but will he or will he try to dodge responsibility, cheap out, rip his fans off, and avoid accountability? I think it's the latter. So those are the three main points. You're all caught up to recap part one, refunds. They're being used as a bargaining chip to drop a lawsuit. And so he never has to produce this game, which has been promised for three years. And he's sold tens of millions of dollars for. Part two is the zoo tokens. He's pretending they're not for a game that they definitely were for to avoid refunding people. When in fact, he admits they were created to support the game. Part three is the lawsuit where he stole my investigation, tried to pass it off as his own, but just cuts out the part where he did everything wrong and leaves out the entire year where he was solely in charge of the project. No bad actors. He could have fixed everything, but he didn't because he, he, he's cheap and doesn't want to pay anybody. Anyway, I hope that catches you up with what's been going on. And I hope we as a community can have the nuance and complexity to hold in our minds two things at the same time as true. One, it's always good if victims get any money back and we should celebrate that. However, number two is 
that doesn't mean we can't fight for 100% of what they deserve. And Logan Paul is not a hero for doing this or making things right. He's a serial scammer who's offering a minority refund as a last ditch effort to save his wallet and his reputation. Well, that was a really informative video. <laughs> I hope you did enjoy. If you did enjoy, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like, check out my other videos too. Check out this guy's channel. Or have a great rest of your day, man. It's your boy Aaron, and I'm out, boys. Peace.